So, Mr. Ezion wanted a Christian to make a video to him about why Jesus is truth or how we determine that Jesus is truth. This is not the other. He said it a few different ways, but I'll just go with the how do you determine Jesus is truth aspect. Or, um, yeah, I'll just try to address that aspect. Well, maybe the spirit is going to me. <laughs> Alright, I'll answer it simply. Jesus is morality. Now, I'll get to people's perception on his morality in modern day, but um, in all reality, Jesus' sense of morality during the time and area to which he was alive in was incredibly high. It was incredibly high. Like, so incredibly high, that if you actually follow what Jesus said, his morality trumps more the majority of morality across the world, so on and so forth. Still does, today, to this day, 2014, 2014 years, generally give or take, you know, a few years after Jesus died, his morality is still at a higher position than the majority of morality around the world. People may have questions about that, and I'll address a few points on so far. I remember hearing, you know, a lot of atheists come to the point of position saying, like, Jesus wants me to love Jesus more than my child, more than my mother, my father. That's immoral. I'm not even going to get into the fact that these people believe that the only form of morality is subjective morality, and how incredibly moronic it is to think that if morality is subjective, that you automatically have a better set of morality for no greater reason than you? Do you understand the concept of subjective? Anyway, <laughs> like I said, I gotta get into it. Look, Jesus' morality was a lot higher, but I'll tell you a quick, this, this video may be hard to follow. You might have to watch it a couple times, but I'm off the top of the head, I don't write stuff down. When I first started conceiving and conceptualizing and the understanding of Jesus, I really came to the point in position, maybe he was just the dude that was like, wow, stuff is messed up, and I really understand how messed up it is, but I can't just go there talking to him like a dude, you know, like, I don't like what you're doing, man, that's not cool. Crap, you need to stop, you know, they're not going to listen to me, so you know what I should do, what I really should do, ah, oh, crap. Probably going to have to die down of this, but screw it. I understand there's a higher moral possibility out there, and I'm going to give my life to see it happen, because these people all believe in this certain doctrine, so on and so forth, so I'm going to embody that. Not to say you didn't believe in God, of course I believe Jesus believed in God, but I think that there may have been times to which he doubt the whole Son of God thing, at times, to which I think that, not always, anyways. With that said, you can tell that Jesus' morality was much higher than the people to which he was living around, the people in his area, the certain thought process these people had, so on and so forth. His morality was on such a higher level. And like I said, his morality still is on a higher level than most people today. Like, feed the hungry. How many Americans actually do that, honestly? You know, help the poor. How many Americans actually do that? You know, heal the sick. How many Americans actually do that? In fact, you know, because of the fact that religion has kind of been turned into a, you know, bastardized capitalist or power system, so on and so forth, people who go, to, the pastors at church don't go there to bring people to a higher level of morality. They go there to pretty much preach the status quo and get them to look at things different. In fact, I think church should be immoral on the lines like, no, you guys are messing up. Do better. And this is why you need to do better. Jesus. Jesus said, you believe in Jesus? We'll follow Jesus. Peppy. Anyways. The other thing I was going to mention and say is that you know, a lot of people get hung up on the whole, like, yeah, Jesus wants me to love him more than, you know, my daughter or my son or my parents, so on and so forth. How horrible. How immoral is that? Again, I don't know if you believe in subjective morality, how you can say a person is immoral, but hey, you know what? Cognitive dissonance. Magical thing. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, 
think if you were really trying to change morality. Think about a person who literally gave his life for everybody in the world. And think that he lived a very morally superior life, so on and so forth. And think about that person caring about you. Think about that person understanding that you do stuff wrong and you need to come to him to be forgiven. How better off are people's thought process with such a thought process? And what I'm pretty much saying is that at the end of the day, if I truly look up to Jesus as a savior or as a person who just lovingly and kindly gave his life in a very brutal means and manner to help me out, I'm going to look at the world from a completely different viewpoint than I just think, oh, this is what it is, so on and so forth. You know, I hurt that person. Well, can't do anything about it now. Screw it. I'm just going to forget about it, this, that, and the other. That viewpoint is drastically different than a viewpoint of saying, no, there, there's reason there's good in this world. There's, there's people who care about me. There's a person who cared about me who was morally much superior than I am, and he did it. He did everything he could to help me. Why am I not going to love that person? You know, it's not to say that I don't love my child, I don't love my parents, but at the end of the day, that perception, that deal, that understanding, that perception is so incredibly vastly and powerful to actually bring about the creation of new understandings and new personal life. May sound like I'm, pre I guess I'm preaching a little bit, but I'm not preaching like, you know, Christian Bible preaching. I'm preaching like, end of the day, perception controls our reality, whatever it is. If we perceive and believe that we can freak a fly, and I go to, you know, a 20 story building, I'm a freaking die. But still, that is a perception of my reality. And at the end of the day, if my perception, my belief is that there was a great, great person, morally superior, morally kind, and maybe the God or the Son of God, so on and so forth, who died for me personally, my perception on the world is going to be vastly different. The love aspect isn't about, you need to love me, it's like, no, you love me, and then you will understand that, yes, I did give my life for you, so you could see the world better. So when it comes down to your mistakes, you don't have to live your mistakes or just completely ignore them and keep making the same things or keep making the same mistakes. Loving me helps you understand and look at the world and reality in a way to which you can actually be forgiven and grow from your mistakes and not let them be a detriment or, you know, a repeated mistake to within your life, so on and so forth. A detriment within your life, a repeated mistake, yeah, makes sense. Incredibly powerful stuff. A lot of people really, like, a lot of, like, I, I, I want to say a lot, a lot of atheists don't tend to see Jesus' words and what he said in the powerful context of what he was trying to do. They just generally judge him by a whole bunch of, you know, they judge him by religion, which generally doesn't vibe with me, but I got a lot of problems with atheists. Not all atheists, I mean. Some atheists I madly respect, like George Carlin. Honestly, think he's trying to make the world a better place. But, like, internet anti-theists or new age atheists, most of them don't know what they're talking about, and because of the fact they're kind of a majority on the internet, act like the worst people out there. And I'll just say this. If you think atheism is the best way to go, look how atheists act on YouTube. They're freaking five-year-olds. God's not real. Like, they, they literally troll all freaking day. If you, to any degree, think that atheism is the better moral stance, you might think about acting like it and not like a freaking five-year-old. But then again, you know what you are, you are. And I just got to say, honestly, and with the level of certainty, that atheism is not the next step to human social evolution. Sorry to burst your guys' bubble, but I don't know. Just got to be honest. Anyways, peace. I'm out. I could go into explanation, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Bam! There it is. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm done. I'm done now. All right, now.